Hey you guys, it's been a while. I've been very busy those past few weeks to the point I couldn't even work on any new projects or even fan art. But here we are, finally. I've been wanting to draw Magicka and Poe again for a while, so I'm gonna be talking over this time lapse. And of course, if you have any questions about the process, ask away. For this video, I wanted to talk about writing for a change. As usual, I'm gonna keep it pretty brief because that's all my time allows, but as always, let me know if this is a topic you'd like to see more of in the future. Feel free to drop suggestions in the comments and hit like on the video so I can get a better idea of the topics people want to see more of. On a random note before starting, I want to say that I've been sleeping on a drabble for Magicka and Poe for a few months now, but I never got around to completing it because time. I'll try to, and if I can't finish it by the end of the year, I'll edit the document into a collection of prompts and headcanons that others can use and enjoy in their own art. Okay, back to the video. I want to sing the praises of people who can just open a Word document, a blank file and look it square in the eye or whatever and start typing. I don't know how they do it, this is sorcery to me and it doesn't work for me at all. The way I usually write is that I let the idea kind of simmer in my head if that makes sense, like I'll sit on the idea for weeks and sometimes months before I begin writing anything. Usually I'll think of a very specific scene or conversation or conflict or emotion, something concrete I can see playing out in my mind's eye as if I'm watching a movie. After some time flipping that scene back and forth, I finally settle on it and I begin jotting it down very roughly in a note app on my phone or a Word document on Google Drive. If I compare writing a story to building a house, this specific concept or scene my story is meant to revolve around is the foundation pillar, and the rest of the whole story follows after, until you've built the whole house, the flooring, the walls, the ceiling, and lastly, the decor. Once I've written down the base ideas or scene that represents the pillar of this house, I finally open a proper word file and finally start writing the rough draft of the rest of the story. And that part takes the longest time, at least that's been my experience personally. Writing the important big main scene, on the other hand, is usually the easiest part for me because it's been fermenting in my head for so long before it ever made it on the paper. The challenge then becomes actually writing the beginning, middle and end of the story and the relevant world building and the little details and flavor that makes reading the story an experience. People talk all the time about having your own writing style and your own unique voice, but like with drawing and painting, you don't force yourself into a style, that's just not how it works. Through years of practice and trial and error and inspiration from many different sources and people you look up to, and your own life, your own experiences and the way you yourself look at the world, it's all of that that helps you eventually arrive at your own voice. If I had to narrow it down to the three main stylistic influences for me in writing, I would say I get my affinity to write details about the world and the environment where my characters live from J.K. Rowling's own way of describing Harry Potter's world. And when it comes to the more melancholic moments and writing characters that feel like strangers and yet are very familiar and relatable, and striking inner monologues tend to be influenced by Torve Janssen's work on the Moomins. And when it comes to emotional and gut-wrenching moments, I take my inspiration from Khaled Hosseini, who you might know as the author of The Kite Runner and A Thousand Splendid Sons, both beautiful and powerful books. This is the author that showed me it's possible to convey such strong emotions using only words, without images. This was a major shift for me in my writing journey, and it made me more adamant to learn how to better use words and structure to convey a human state. I don't write horror material at all, it's not my forte and I know whatever I attempt to write would be hilarious for all the wrong reasons, but I definitely look to the works of Stephen King for the more creepy descriptions and character designs in general. He's also really good at writing feelings of unease and sadness, which I take cues from. Those are the three authors I take the most inspiration from in general, but of course I also get a lot of inspiration from my favorite shows and games. Writing for a novel or a short story isn't the same as writing for a script, 
but I found that I can write something interesting when I combine interesting elements from the worlds of literature, television, and video games. And when you learn from the writing styles and character voices from fictional works that give you so much happiness and funnel them through the context of your outlook on life and how you see and experience the world, you create something new, something people might refer to as original. I want to talk a little bit about fan fiction as well. I know some people tend to not say that they write fanfics not because they're ashamed of it, but rather because they're concerned they won't be seen as serious writers. In my opinion, this general culture of mocking fanfiction writers comes from the fact that a lot of these stories are written by very young people, people who are still new, still learning, so they haven't really gotten the hang of writing good. A lot of the written content can also be very unsafe for work or contains material a lot of people would find very problematic. I understand all of that, but on the other hand, some of the most delightful stories I've ever read were fanfiction. And just like painting, thoughtful, beautiful writing is a skill that you spend your entire lifetime building. And fanfiction is an amazing way of improving your writing without having to go through the very time-consuming process of meticulously planning out a brand new world in which your characters live. I found that when my time is super tight and I can't really write a proper story piece, I will write and share concepts and headcanons in a way that reads like a fleeting scene between the characters. It's like writing a one-sentence story and you'd be surprised how even a well-written headcanon that gives the reader a lot to imagine and think about can brighten their day and make them feel like they've read a story. When you take an existing property and characters and write a new story with these existing assets, you're producing a piece of art that makes somebody's day a little brighter. And while these characters aren't yours and you can't profit from them, it doesn't take away from the fact that you produced art. Writing is writing. Don't listen to elitists who try to gatekeep people simply for making fan art and fan fiction. Yes, even though there is such a thing as bad or tasteless art, there is no such thing as one correct form of art. On a final note, I have some writing advice that really worked for me and improved my own writing. Number one, write about what you like and not necessarily what you know. Because in many cases, if you simply write about the things you know, you may not end up with a very exciting story. Most of our daily lives are mundane because so much of it is spent working anyway. But when you write about things you love and things you're interested in and explore concepts and ideas and emotions that are important to you, that's when you can create something that touches people. Don't be afraid of researching for these topics as well. It's a normal part of writing. When you write about something that interests you, but you don't know a whole lot about it, research, 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 read, read, and read some more about that topic. This will enrich your writing more than you know, and your reader will be truly invested in the world, even if not everything is 100% scientifically or historically accurate. It doesn't have to be in fiction. Number two, use interesting metaphors instead of just stating something as it is. You're writing a story, not a scientific paper, and you want the reader to feel what the character is feeling, so instead of saying something like, she was very happy, you can say something like, she was elated, she felt like she was dancing on the clouds. Number three, try your best to avoid overused cliches and sentences such as, I don't know, red as a rose, for example. When you use something people have heard and read a million times, it's not bad per se, but you kind of run the risk of breaking the suspension of disbelief faster. Number four, there really is nothing wrong with using the word said most of the time. New writers tend to worry that it makes their writing boring because of how many times you write it, but here's the thing. Said is one of the words that become invisible to the reader in a way that doesn't break their suspension of disbelief. In fact, when you go overboard and start using a ridiculous amount of synonyms such as replied, responded, exclaimed, proclaimed, etc., it just sounds it just starts sounding ridiculous and takes the reader out of the experience. You can use these words, but use them sparingly, only when they're really needed for impact. Otherwise, just stick with said. Number 5. Don't edit your work while you're on the first draft. If you wrote a new paragraph in your story today, for example, Avoid correcting it right away. Instead, let it sit for a while and come back and look at it later. Then you can edit. 
It's pretty similar with drawing when you think about it. Sometimes you have to move away from the canvas for a while and return to it with a fresh outlook to think more clearly on how you can improve it. Number six, endings are super important. Make sure your story has a great ending and in my personal opinion, the best and most memorable endings are those where the story comes full circle, when the reader finally understands why the story began the way it did. And that's it for this video guys, please give it a like if you liked it and share your thoughts and subscribe to my channel. As some of you know, I'm trying to hit 100 subscribers in 2021, so subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and until next time.